Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you how I made these boxes. First of all I'm going to explain what these boxes are though. I'm going to be sending one of these as a thank you gift to all the customers in my online stamping up shop during October 2017. And inside the box there will be one bar of chocolate and a biro and on the biro it has my website, my mobile number and states that I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator but the real beauty of this pen is that the end of it is a stylus um, and that means if um, you're using anything like um, a mobile phone or iPad where you're using a little keyboard on here this will actually do the keys for you so if you find that your fingers get in the way this is absolutely brilliant and that's a load of rubbish on there as well um, but that's what my gift is going to be for all my October customers now I'm not going to worry about doing that up on screen. Um, as usual I'm going to change my colour scheme and this time I'm going to be doing Old Olive. So I'm going to start off with telling you the card pieces that you'll be needing. You don't want to see that uh, scribble. Right, to start off with you need two pieces of cardstock which measure eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches which is 21 centimeters by 14.6 centimeters another piece of old olive which measures five and five eighths inches by four inches which is 14.3 by 10.2 centimeters and then to decorate the lid you need a piece of whisper white cardstock which measures three and one eighth inches by 5 5 8 inches which is 7.9 by 14.3 centimeters and then you need a piece of designer series paper and I am using this which is from um, Merry Little Christmas and this measures 3 inches by 5.5 five inches um, at the moment I haven't decided whether I want to use one of our silver or one of our gold um, uh, for snowflakes and you'll also need a piece of whisper white just to stamp the little image on there and it, the decoration on here what I've done is I've done uh, tie some ribbon round and I've also put one of our little uh, year, uh, cheer, year of the cheer hold on what is it called cheers to the year um, embellishments set everything coordinates so beautifully. The ribbon that I've used on the um, red ones, the cherry cobbler, that's a retired ribbon but this one is all current stock and I thought that went quite well with it because it's got a little glimmer in it and it really picks up the gold. So we're going to start off by scoring so we need these three pieces But before we score, we need to do a slight bit of adjustment to one of these pieces. And for that, I use my trimmer. So if I can just reach that over. When you're making a box with a lid, you need the, um, the base of the box to be a tad smaller so that you can actually get the top to slide over it without any big fight and the way the easiest way of doing this is if you get both pieces the same size and then use your trimmer and if I can get my paper piercer where you see down here the cutting groove that one there okay so that's where the cutter goes you'll see next to it another line and that's where this comes out okay so it's where this side here goes in that channel there okay so that line there now what you need to do is 
line your cardstock now it doesn't matter which side you do because you're going to trim two sides and as long as those two sides are adjacent it doesn't matter which one you start with so you need to line your cardstock up with the top up here and then this side here line it up with that groove which is the edge of where that goes in okay you see that bit so that line down there you line this so that you can just about see that line there okay make sure you get it straight all the way down right I think that's it and then you need to slice that off and that's how much will be coming off okay now as I say you need two adjacent sides so just turn your cardstock 90 degrees and do the same to this one line it up up here and then line this edge to that channel which is where this bit fits in okay so line it up so that you can just about see that and then once you're happy slice that off as well okay so now when you make these up one will automatically come up smaller than the other and that's what you need for the base. Now you can use your trimmer to do your scoring which is next but I do prefer to use my scoreboard right so for these two big pieces you need to score on all four sides that's not going to do the job is it? Um, on all four sides at five eighths of an inch and also one and a quarter inches which is 1.6 centimeters and 3.2 centimeters okay so that's five eighths and that's one and a quarter or if you're doing metric that's 1.6 and 3.2 and just go around and do that on all four sides so that's one piece do exactly the same to this one five eighths one and a quarter or 1.6 and 3.2 centimeters so that's those two and then for this piece which is going to be the liner inside the box that's going to separate the chocolate from the pen so on this one you need to score this at half an inch, one inch and one and a half inches which is 1.3, 2.6 and 3.9 so that's half, one, one and a half or 1.3, 2.6, 3.9 okay so that's all the scoring done Now if we take this piece back first, you need to fold one forward, one backwards and one forwards, okay, that's that one. Now on these I do my cutting first and you need to do both of these the same. So have your cardstock horizontally and then on this second score line if you start counting from here the second one in cut a straight line up to the second score line okay now do that on all four sides so if you're on this one if you count in two score lines and cut up to the second score line 
and then turn it 180 degrees and do the opposite side now if you turn 90 degrees so you had your cardstock vertically again you want to go up to the second score line but this time only cut in a straight line up to the first score line and then do that on the other end as well and then this one on the second score line in cut up to the first score line again nice straight line now we need to do our mitres so first of all this is where we've cut here we're going to cut a mitre across there and then we're going to cut by that score line but as a mitre going up to where we cut on that single one so those two squares should drop off okay so you finish up with something that looks like that okay and you need that on all four corners so if we come back to this one cut as a mitre up to there and then mitre this one up to the corner so that they drop off okay mitre in the corner to get rid of that one mitre on that side to get the two squares to drop off mitre into the corner if you're like me you need to give it a little bit of a help to make it let go and then a corner mitre up to that one okay now we need to do exactly the same on here horizontally second score line in cut straight line up to the second score line and do that on all four corners okay so that's two on the horizontal side this side turn 180 degrees and do the two on the horizontal side this side Oops. and then I'm going to turn so I've got it vertically I'm going onto the second score line again I'm going to cut a straight line but I'm only going up to the first score line this time and do that on both sides turn 180 degrees and do that again on both sides so they're all the nice straight lines we needed now we're going to do our mitres so first of all where we've cut this one we're going to do a mitre along this side and now a mitre on this side and hopefully our two squares are going to drop off mitre and mitre and hopefully they drop off yep mitre into the corner and then mitre to get the squares to drop off and last one there we go that's all that rubbish now we're going to fold and use our bone folder so we get nice creases um, I like to do boxes like this so that I have a double layer on the um, sides of my boxes I think it just helps to make them that much stronger I also like the finish that you get because you get a, um, a rounded top to them 
Right, so that's those. I do those first, then I make sure that I bring the tabs over nice and straight. And then this one. do these and make sure that they crease nicely as well there we go now to glue these again you do both parts the same I'm going to be using Tombow, but you can use Fast Fuse for this, or you could use um, Red Sticky Strip if you still use that, or our Tear and Tape. You could, if you wanted, cut off the top squares on these, so you're only using one square for the tab. I leave mine on because I just think it gives extra support. Now when you fold these over, line them up so you get a nice straight corner. That's better. I wasn't doing too well there. And then go around and do the other corners. to stick these pieces down and again I'm using Tombow for mine so I'm going to do the two long ones first there's one side well one side glued up anyway Fold that one over. Just give it a bit of a squeeze. And give this one a bit of a squeeze. And then go over it with your bone folder to make sure it really does stick down well. side okay now I'm going to put glue on that one and that one and stick those over it's easier if you do the two big ones first bone folder to make sure that flattens down really nicely. Okay so that's that one. 
exactly the same for the other one. I'm not sure at the moment which is which. I think this one looks as if it's possibly the lid. I'm not sure. It just looks a fraction bigger. Okay, so again, fold these up. Nice corner. fourth corner that's it just make sure you've got nice straight corners there now I'm going to do put some Tombow on the two long sides so I can close that down just move those out of the way stuck that down very well as if it's coming up too high fortunately this is going to get covered up so it's not going to show that I've pulled it off and typed it over again let's just get the glue off my fingers Okay, let's carry on. No, oh, didn't do the other side, did I? Okay, so let's get that one done. I'll catch up with myself. <laughs> and then flatten it with the bone folder. and then the other side as well. Another two end pieces. that one and then the last one all right I so said that one I thought was a lid didn't I although that one looks like it now which one there we go Okay, so that's how they fit together because I sliced those extra little bits off. Okay, that's out a little bit, but that's all right, that's going to have some ribbon around it. Now, the next thing we need to do is to add some little finger notches, and for that, I use the half inch circle punch. And first of all, I mark my box. And I know this is five and something inches long. So if I make sure I've got, no, you can't see it. Let's do it this way. Um, that way. Right, okay. I look, judging at the measurements I got down this end, I can see that that's halfway along there so I'm just going to put a little mark there remember that this has got to go here obviously it's a lot easier when you can actually work on the ruler and there's that one as well so a little mark so now I'm going to 
tip the box so I can see my little mark there and I'm going to have my punch upside down so that I can see that that is actually halfway. That's a little bit difficult to do this because it's oops, <laughs> two um, thicknesses. But I find I can do it as long as I use two fingers, uh, two hands rather. Whoops, I cut them both on the shelf in front of me. Right, there we go. Push that back into shape again. Now we need to put this inside the box. Now, because we shaved just a very small amount off of this, you may find that this is a tad too big. In which case, oh no, mine's spot on. Um, one of them I had to take it to my guillotine and cut just an absolute tad off. But this one fits in beautifully. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in there just so the two sides get stuck together and then I'm going to put some glue on the base here as well. Okay, and then this, pinch those two pieces together, don't let that bit goes down, pop it in so that, that goes right against the edge inside and then you can pop that one down as well and very gently push that in. Um, at this stage you don't want to use too much pressure because the foam folder will leave marks unless you're lucky enough to have one of the non-stick ones which I don't yet but I will be getting one so there we go so there's the box with the liner and there's a box of chocolates to go inside a bar of chocolate to go inside and a pen and the lid to go on top nice and easy so to decorate I'm going to put the Whisper White piece on first. I have classes tomorrow and we're using the um, these foil snowflakes so I'm a little bit low on them at the moment. That's the last silver one that I have um, but I've got about five gold ones left. They will be the first thing going on my order that I do on Sunday. So there we go, there's that. Now I'm going to put my designer series paper on the top of that. Now for the next bit, I'm going to use my scrap of Whisper White, Old Olive Ink, and I'm going to be using this stamp here from Cheers to the Year. There we go, that looks good. Now this is the only thing I need my Big Shot for, so let me just clear a space. I could just punch the circle out, but I really, really do like our stitched shape framelits. So I don't think I've actually bought them all over. I've only got the one that I'm using and this is the second size I believe. I will check it and make sure that I've got the right information in the box underneath the video. Okay so just centre that and pop it through.
move this one away. There we go. Now, I've got to decide what colour I want. So, first of all, that would be silver. Silver. Let you have a look as well. See whether you agree with the decision that I make. Oh, well, I think that's got to be gold. <laughs> I wonder what you're saying. Good shout or no, Jan, don't do it, don't do it. Right, to adhere these two to each other, um, I don't think I bought my, uh, oh, here it is, my silicon craft mat. And what I find is if I put snail, which you don't see me use often, okay, so I just put some on the back. pop this in the center and I know that this one with the diamond these points this because I've done those others I've learned that this has got to have those two points showing something like that so I'll just follow it around and make sure that's what I'm getting on all of them Approximately the same amount. Whoops, it's got stuck to my finger. Use my tweezers, it's a lot easier. Right, okay. Yep, that looks like it. Now to get this stuck onto there, and one thing you must remember is when you're sticking these onto this particular box, where you've got every alternate one is taller than the one in here and it's these smaller ones that need to be on the outside and you want them to line up with your little finger notch there okay because if you put the shorter ones definitely got glue on my finger um, if you put the shorter ones so they're on the edge of the box it all fits on whereas if you put the pointy ones they just about come off the edge of your box and you don't want that. So to get this stuck on, again you could use fast fuse or um, I imagine snail would work but I do use Tombow as much as possible. So I've just put that all over there, line this up with the finger notch and then this one up with the finger notch and I know it's straight. Okay, so that's gold. Now on each of these I have put one of these little embellishments which is from the uh, Cheers to the Year and that's the other design. They both come in gold and silver. Okay, so I need gold for this one. Take the first one that's this one here and I need a little bit of gold twine now this was left over from last year so any gold twine that you have just take a small bit fold it in half and then if you make a little fold there and there is a right side and wrong side to this one side you'll see is quite flat but that point you want to point it through the hole from the front and then put those two tails through the hole and then pull it through so that that loop goes on the top of the ring here okay can you see how that's gone on the top don't let it go so it's going down the bottom here strangling the ring there okay so like that is good now to adhere this I'm going to use a glue dot 
I am going to use two, but to start off with, one is going to suffice. I'm going to pop that into the center. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Pop that into the center. Decide how low I want this to come, making sure I've got it the right way round. And I think that's good. And I'm just going to push that down onto the glue dot, cut the excess off like that, and then I'm going to tie my ribbon around. And I think, well that's only 16, about 19 inches I suppose. Hmm, I do like this green. Right, so just tie it into a nice bow. Before I finish I'm going to move it so that uh, it's glued on with the glue dot. I'll put another one on top of it, another glue dot on top. Okay. So that's good. Right, now what I try and do is I try and get this ribbon to just go over that finger notch and then I find it's high enough on my decoration. There we go. Okay, so you come back. You can come down. And I'm going to put another glue dot before I finally decide on my positioning. Right, yep. no, I didn't want you to stick down just yet. Oh, that was a battle between the glue dot and the paper piercer. There we go. And I'm just going to tidy this up. And there we go. Delightful gift, isn't it? And it's been done in such a way that the recipient can reuse that box for something else if they want to, if they've got something similar to give to somebody. Or even if they want to gift on the gift that they're receiving. So there we go, there's that one, that one, that one and this one minus its bow. But it was a very easy project. Um, boxes to make like that really are quite straightforward. Uh, both halves are the same. Many thanks for joining me. If you have any questions, um, please leave them in the comments box below. I'm always happy to answer any queries that you have. Um, if you'd like to purchase any of the products that I featured here, um, during October, well any time actually, but if you purchase during October you will receive one of these as my thank you gift to you um, and you will receive it at the beginning of November. The link to my 24-7 online stamping up shop will also be in the box below. Just click on the link and that will take you straight there. If you've enjoyed watching my video and you'd like to be notified each time I upload a new one, which is normally Wednesdays and Sundays, Please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button and if you feel like giving me a thumbs up that would also be appreciated. Um, and also in the box below I will be putting all the measurements, all the details where the score lines have to go, the products that I've used and everything else like that that you need. So that's my shop, The how to, uh, any comments you want to make, products and measurements everything is down below for you. Okay, many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio.